Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Friday, March 15th, and today we are joined by our first guest to appear on our show twice. Yes. Uh, Deke um, Castleman. On March 15th, what? 2024. That's right. The year of 2024. <laughs> We're never going to forget that again. Right. But yes, Dee Castleman joining us uh, today for this show. Yay. So we're in, a, we're in a different venue, our, our three-person venue. Uh, for those who don't know, Deke's been the senior editor at Huntington Press and Las Vegas Advisor for how long, Deke? 30-some years? I don't know how many years, but I know it's exactly 327 newsletters. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's a long time. It's been decades. Yeah. But it's, it's good because Deke lives in uh, Arizona, and of course, these days you can, especially with publishing, you can work remotely. And uh, he comes in every couple of months, and he happens to come in now in a perfect timing because of the subject matter of you know what we're going to talk about. But first, I have a I have an announcement uh, to make. Not really an announcement. It's really just a, something to bring to people's attention that maybe for the first time since the original, the first one we've ever did, Andrew and I are both clean shaven. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Almost. You got you got you got a little bit of stubble there. This is clean shaven for me because okay. I, I did the hair dye and the shave to look good for Deke. And, and Deke's clean shaven all, as always. Yeah. But I mean, when you look back, I, you would have a hard time finding one of these episodes where either you or I don't have just scrubble all over ourselves, that's right? That's funny. Scrubble. That's a good that observation. Yeah. Well, my dad always says, like, you got to go for the young host look. You got to go. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you got three young guys right here. I just noticed <laughs> that when Andrew walked in, I went, something's different about him. What is it? And I'm yeah. looking at him and looking at him. You had a haircut. Oh, I was rugged yesterday. Yeah. 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 So one, <laughs> one, one day later. So that's that. Second, just a quick public service announcement, sort of. Um, the member rewards book, I know a lot of our viewers have member rewards. Uh, our first casualty of the year, uh, the Aloha Hawaiian Grill at the plaza is closed. Oh, no. So we had a twofer there. That was great. Uh, we're contacting them to see if they're going to replace it with anything. But if you were planning your whole trip around the Aloha Hawaiian Grill, you might have to cancel. All right. So just letting them know. So start us off, man. All right, so big news in Las Vegas is uh, I hear the volcano at the Mirage is erupting again. <laughs> it's it's erupting. It was interrupting. It, it was, was inter interrupted. Inter it was interrupted for a while. From erupting. Yeah, you know, they, they stopped it because of the, uh, the Super Bowl promo mm -hmm. where they turned that into... It was Something. like a paramount. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Gondola, we reported on it. Yeah, and, and, and the reality was, I, I didn't think it was going to reopen. Did you? I mean, I... I I did. They said it was going to reopen. It was a temporary interruption only for a couple of months for Super Bowl, and then it was going to come back because it's very slow with the developing situation over there. Yeah, well, it's I thought... It's just going on slow. Yeah, I thought they were going to take the opportunity, you know, to say, okay, you know, we're just not bringing it back. But they did, which, which leads me to believe that it's going to run for a while, mm -hmm. you know? I mean... They're just not, we're talking about the change over the Mirage to uh, Hard Rock brand. And they're going to build the, the Guitar Hotel on the spot where the, where the volcano is. And they're still not talking about, about timetables. The only thing they're saying about it, they won't say when they're going to demolish the volcano to start building the, the, uh, the hotel. The only thing they will say, they came out about a week ago saying the completion of the entire thing, the hotel, the, the brand change and everything, would either be late 2027 or early 2028. I'll take the under. Actually, no, I'll take the over. I was going to say, I'll book your under, you know, <laughs> for sure. So we don't, you know, we don't know, but it looks like the volcano is going to be going for a while. But what's interesting about this is that when the volcano opened, uh, Deke and I were here and covered it. And we put it in the Las Vegas Advisor, an area in the Advisor, the old style of the Advisor, where we always talked about something that was a little bit different, and we called it what? The Volcano Box, because the volcano attraction was the first content that went into that box on page two at the bottom. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. And for those who have been LVA members for a long time, you'll remember that box at the bottom. And the way we referred to it was always as the Volcano Box. Uh, That's hilarious. Yeah. And that was that was the first free spectacle in Vegas. I mean, that was the New Vegas, the Mirage opened the New Vegas, and and the volcano was the big deal, and it led to 
the Fremont Street experience and the pirate battle and the fountains right. at Bellagio and, you know, and on and on and on. Well, you know, I always say that there are these free experiences to, to go have in Vegas and it's the Bellagio fountains. It's uh, it's the volcano. It's go go check it out. The yeah, Fremont Street experience. Well, that, one. That's it's, too. It's still yeah. going. Yeah. It used to be everywhere. Not only the volcano, but, you know, you go into the Mirage, they still have that 50,000-gallon aquarium behind the front desk. Mm -hmm. They still have the tropical rainforest with the glass roof and the oh, lobby. Wow. Yeah. A lot of cool things that are left over mm -hmm. from Steve Wynn uh, and his vision for Las Vegas uh, that really came all to fruition with the Mirage. Yeah, right. changed everything. I always say it flipped the switch on the new Vegas. You know, and that and, and that was it. So anyway, Volcano is now operating. This is another thing. It it goes daily on the hour from eight o'clock to eleven. So it goes at you if you want to see it, you'd be there at either eight, nine, ten, or eleven. Remember, Deke, it used to be every fifteen minutes. I mean, it was four times an hour they used to run it. And I think it's uh, the new owner said that's a little expensive. Wow, <laughs> right. okay. So yeah. well how frequent's the Bellagio Fountains every half hour? Jeez, I don't know. I mean, yes. Yeah, every 30 minutes, uh, weather permitting, it wasn't on last night because it was still the wind. windy. Yeah, they started uh, taking it down when the wind is really bad. I just did a, shot, a, a shoot in front of there, mm -hmm. and they were they wanted to get the fountains. This was the 60 minutes thing that's still coming up. We don't know the date on that yet. Yeah. And it went to a... a it, it went to a, a more rapid turnover at a certain time. I think at whatever, 7 o'clock, it started going every half hour as opposed to every hour, I think. I think it changes. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have to look at that for the future. Yeah. Well, the cool thing about the Bellagio Fountains is you do have different uh, songs. So if you see it more than once, you're going to get a different uh, water orchestration with a different song. Yeah. I remember when we first, uh, De Deke went and reviewed it. He wasn't impressed. He wrote, the water goes up, the water comes down. <laughs> Remember that? No. <laughs> you, that's what you wrote. The water goes up, the water comes down. It's only turned into like the, the biggest spectacle in Vegas, but that's all right. <laughs> Well, I had just come from Disneyland, where they had a water um, attraction, uh -huh. and there was it was all colors, mm -hmm. and I was really impressed by the colors against the water, and I wasn't particularly impressed by the fact that the fountains were just white. Mm -hmm. I really liked the colors at Disneyland, mm -hmm. and so the comparison I would. Uh, Fell a little short to me. Right. But it, over the years, it's gotten great. So anyway, Volcano. Um, next. Next is, um, this is a quick one. Uh, the Circa Sportsbook is now uh, open at Silverton. Yeah, open open or opening this weekend or something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, you know, it may be open already. It's not that big a deal. I mean, you know, Circa Sports uh, takes over for, uh, I, I'd rather have Circa than just about anybody else in terms of how sports books operate around here. It takes over for William Hill. Mm -hmm. um, it is the sixth uh, Circa sports book in Las Vegas. I was going to say there's multiple. They, they seem really? to be expanding. Mm -hmm. there, there's one uh, right by Ellis Island at... Uh, Tuscany. Tuscany, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, here's a, you, got the, you got the D, mm -hmm. you got Golden Gate, Circa, of course, Tuscany, you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. The Pass. Okay. Uh, Downtown. Okay. Uh, Henderson. Henderson. Yeah. And now um, this one at Silverton. So that's their sixth. Wow. They've also got a seventh, which is up at, in Reno area in Sparks mm -hmm. at uh, Legends Bay. And isn't there one in Colorado? Yeah. They've also got uh, Iowa, Colorado, Illinois, and they're about to open in Kentucky. Oh. So, well, way to go, Derek. Yeah. Way to go. Derek Stevens and Circa, man. Uh, fantastic. Their, their contests will get bigger and bigger. And um, congratulations to them. Hopefully, and, we'll get uh, more overlays. Yeah, yes, more overlays. That would be great. So the reason we brought the reason we're happy, Deeks here really is we uh, the main subject of this uh, of this video is going to be the uh, the Tropicana closing, mm -hmm. and uh, Deke is uh, maybe the foremost historian, or certainly among them, of Nevada Nevada history. He's shaking his head, but uh, he did he for years wrote the Nevada Handbook. And he wrote Compass Guide to Las Vegas. And he wrote, the did, was it the Fodor's Guide? Uh, I think he wrote once or twice. So Deke's been, been all over it. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit of TROP. Uh, the main thing, though, is that it's, you know, it's been all over the news. They're closing April 2nd. And people go to these, these closings on the last day because, you know, nostalgia. And they want to be there. And they want to say they were there on closing day or they made the last bet or, you know, whatever. 
And um, really, if you want to do that, you've got to do it. The, the party's going to be on April 1st. Okay. Because it's been announced that the casino for, floor will close on April 2nd at 3 a.m. So you know what they're doing is they're going to have a party all night long. And by a party, I mean just people drinking, coming, drinking, talking, being there. And through midnight and then at 3 o'clock, they'll shut it down and they'll be closing the place down all on uh, on April 2nd. It's almost poetic that it's April 1st, April Fool's Day. Yeah, so, you know, uh, it sounds like the party to be at. I mean. Well, they haven't announced a party. Yeah. So who knows? I've been to I've been to closings where nothing happened. I went to the uh, when the King Eight closed. Mm-hmm. I went there. Yeah. You know, which it had become wildfire. Or no, wild wild west. wild wild west. Oh, we showed that on the show. It looked dead. There was nobody there. There wasn't a single person there. <laughs> yeah. I've gone to other last nights that uh, we've been to a few. Right? Yeah. Did, we, did we go to the Riviera? Did Did, did uh, we go to that one together? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I was no. there. Stupak. Bob Stupak was shooting dice. Oh, and wow. Sometimes it can be real cool. Yeah. But. That's what I would hope for uh, on April 1st at the Trop, you know, uh, like old school people coming in to see it for the last time. I think you will. And I think it's I think it's worth going. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to go, you know, that night. And I'm gonna, if it's happening, I'm going to stay, you know, probably into midnight, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. But Just, you don't think you're going to be amongst people cleaning up and moving no. stuff out? Like it's going to be operational. and then Not on once, April 1st. Yeah. You know, Maybe so, the next day. All right, Deke, tell us a little something about Tropicana and we'll, we'll all get involved. Well, the um, curious thing to me is that they didn't wait till April 3rd because that was the date that it opened in 1957. Oh, A perfect bookend. Right. Yeah. So this is the 68th. That would be the 68th anniversary. Or is it the 67th. 67th? Yeah, 67th. So they're going to go, they're going to close one day short of 67th. One wow. day short of the anniversary. Wow. And when it opened, uh, you know, it was the class on the Strip. It was called the Tiffany of the Strip. Right. And it cost $15 million, Mm -hmm. which was double what any other joint had cost. The Riviera cost $8 million, so it was a little less than double. Wow. These days, you couldn't you couldn't million. build a parking garage for 15 million. Right. I bet they I bet they spent 15 million converting the Carnival World buffet to the canteen <laughs> food hall at the Rio across the street. Yeah, really. That's hilarious. Right? You're probably right. I mean, I just spent 120,000 opening up a new storefront um for for my kids business. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, you can name it Juice. Yeah, Juice. And there we go. Know. My sons uh, run a juice and smoothie business. They just opened up a new store. That was expensive, and it was all an existing storefront that all I had to do was a little plumbing, put some refrigeration, lights. Well, tell them to get down to Vegas because, you know, uh, we need some juice down here, too. Well, Vegas is all about juice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but really, like, I don't know where to go get good juice except for the Venetian, and that's overpriced. They'd have juice in Vegas, knowing Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, when it opened, uh, it was, you know, I, my great LVA correspondent, Canada Roy, completely out of the blue, sends this story to me that was published in the Las Vegas Sun on April 3rd, 1957 at 6 a.m. Oh, wow. Okay. Covered the, it said, $15 million Tropicana Hotel opens today. And here's a couple of descriptions. Lush luxury, extremely good taste. I don't know about that. Warmth, intimacy, and functional efficiency. All right. This was, this was actually journalism in those days. Yep. It was an advertorial. Breathtaking dining rooms. Uh, the casino is directly behind, beyond the lobby, but is screened from immediate view by lush foliage and picturesque, picturesque planters. And this is the one I love. I'll get it for you in a minute. Um, they were talking about the theater. A, taste, a tastefully tailored room, which seats 450 for dinner. Remember in those days, the show, dinner show. Came with yeah. dinner show. And then the, the, it, the story ends on the lavish production numbers while the dressing rooms are unsurpassed in the history of show business. All right. Great. Here's what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I remember about the trap. All right. I remember Foley Berger, 
and all the people that came up through Foley Berger, right? Which was, a, you know, the great Vegas production show. We've talked about that. Yeah, when I was a kid, we used to, we stayed, I stayed there. Yeah. Like when I was eight, nine years old, my family would go and we stayed at the Trop. And was, I saw the, I, all I saw was Folly's Burger. And I'm like, well, I want a Folly's Burger, man, you know? Cool. But, but most people, I think we've mentioned this on the show before, Siegfried and Roy started there. Mm -hmm. And I looked it up just quickly before the show and said when they started, they started in 1967 is when, and they were, it was like a, a production show with all these different acts, and they were act number 14. Siegfried and Roy, which became the biggest, you know, the biggest deal in Vegas. Yeah. So I remember that also who came up through there was Lance Burton. Sure. Ended up having his own show, headliners to call it the showroom. You know, everyone talks about the ceiling, the stained glass ceiling. You know, what's going to happen with that? They're talking about maybe the neon uh, museum might take it. Not sure about that. No. Uh, their Baccarat room was really under the radar for really big action. Uh, a lot of the, they used to have a lot of uh, South American business there. I'd go and I'd see people betting. You know the, the amount of my mortgage, you know, okay. that kind of thing. You know, they had the amount of my mortgage on one bet. Uh, they had the ultimate showgirl contest there. Mm -hmm. They had the swim up. You know, they had one. They only had one. One one woman won it way back in the in the eighties. Um, they had the uh, the swim up uh, blackjack, the first one. We've talked pool. about that too. Yeah, yeah. And they had, and it was cool because the, they had the dryers there to make the money when it would fall into the yeah. pool. It would make the money dry. <laughs> Can we bring that back? Can somebody bring bring that back? That sounds like fun. It was cool. I played it. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So you know, there were a lot of things about the Tropicana. You know, and uh, like you said, Deke, probably one of the three remaining on the strip of the originals, along with, uh, even though they've gone through some changes, Flamingo and Sahara, right? Yeah, but the thing about the TROP is that the original garden rooms that the property opened with 67 years ago are still there. Oh, wow. I mean, they were never torn down, even uh, when Ramada bought the place in 1979, they did a big remodel with a, that island of Las Vegas, remember that, with the, yeah. the, the big pool area, three acres? That's when the swim up blackjack came in, but they never tore down those garden rooms. They're still there. Yeah. So it's really the original rooms, the only original rooms on the strip. Mm -hmm. uh, even the Sahara doesn't even have the, um, the, their original garden rooms yeah. anymore. Well, when it's, you know, they're going to, they're going to demolish it. I mean, that's almost a sure thing, whether or not the baseball stadium comes or not, they're going to demolish it because they want, and it's not going to come back as a trap. When they, whatever they rebuild there, and they, they claim this is Bally's Corporation, that they're going to rebuild it, and I think they're going to call it Bally's. I mean, I, I think that's what they're saying. So the Trop, this is it, man. This is it for the Tropicana. Wow. Another Bally's. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so one more thing about the Trop before we move on. Um, in our book, Joe's Dash, uh, there's a really good coverage of, of shenanigans at the Tropicana. And over the years, we're not going to talk about it uh, because of all of the problems, you know, everywhere with the mob and everything else. But the trap was in, in Burrell and all of that. But uh, Joe Dorsey, who's yeah. the, the main man out of, out of Joe's Dash, um, kind of put an end to some crap there. Yeah, right, Deke? Well, there were, there were so many different owners and there was so much mob infiltration and and so many changes over the years. There was no management. There was no discipline even when they caught people. And Joe started working there as the director of security and surveillance. I think it was in the late 80s, if I'm not mistaken. And he was there for two hours, and he found three scams mm -hmm. in the pit. There was a uh, There was a host scam on the slot machines. There was a change scam where this change woman in the booth had stolen millions of dollars over 12 years and silver dollars mm -hmm. and he caught them and there were so many scams that he finally after a couple of months he finally put a sign in the employee break room that said the mob has left the building please stop stealing <laughs> wow <laughs> It's a good chapter. It's a big part of the, what, you know, it's about 10 pages of the book. Yeah, it's a it? whole chapter. Yeah, a whole chapter. So if you want to read about the trop, Joe's Dash, pretty some some good stuff there. So anyway, adios Tropicana. Um, I'll be there. Come on, come on by. I'll be there um, April 1st, hanging out. I'll be there too. And now because of this conversation, I'm going to go try to see some of those hotel rooms. Ah, cool. You All know, right. maybe they'll have one open for people to go check out. Go stay in one. I'd like to. Get some sleep. <laughs> and, uh, I need it. They had balconies. They, you'll see the balconies over overlooking the pool area. It was really quite luxurious. Uh, yeah. 
for all the, the whole time it was there. Cool. All right. And in this week's question of the week, uh, this is a great question. I've heard this one before uh, in Las Vegas. And the question is, are there any good Jewish delis in Las Vegas? Well, of course, we've had this question for a while. and We, we saved it for Deke because that's another one of Deke's specialties. Deke, uh, Deke likes the... Uh, the delis. He he likes to check them out, and he likes to make the distinguish the difference between a real Jewish deli and so forth. So let's oh. go, man. Okay, so there's like a difference between a real Jewish deli. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's get into it. Well, you know, I grew up on this food in New York, so I consider myself not an expert, but uh, you know, I've lived this my whole life, and I've watched delis come and go in Vegas. You know, the the great one to me was the, the stage deli at MGM. It didn't last too long. That was the first one, right? I mean, you know, uh, Vegas goes through all these different things that were going to be this, and, and they brought in the stage deli at MGM as like, look at this cool thing, probably to go with the disco, right? They had opened, they had opened their disco up, you know, or whatever, their club upstairs, Studio 54. Right, I remember. And I think they were probably this whole New York scene, this whole New York vibe thing. But it didn't last long. They made it into a, a takeout counter. That didn't last long. Carnegie Deli was uh, at the Mirage. Mirage again, yeah. And that was Cantor's great. Cantor's was at Treasure Island. Yeah. But that wasn't a real deli. That was just a takeout counter, too. The one that's been around the longest is Greenberg's at New York, New York. Okay. But that's what I call pseudo deli. See, I haven't been to that one. Okay, so that's a pseudo. How come? Uh, because to... I mean, all of the New York style delis are going to have matzo ball soup. Yes. Right? And most of them are going to have latkes. Yes. Right? And some of them will have blintzes. Or knish. <laughs> yeah, but now we're getting a little bit more specific, right? Okay. So Greenberg, okay. Greenberg has, um, all Greenberg has is matzo ball soup. So it's kind of pseudo. It's New York style. It's big sandwiches, corned beef pastrami on rye. Deli is going to have that. But to be legitimate Jewish, you need more Jewish food, mm -hmm. right? So Greenberg's doesn't have much. I just ate at Junior's yesterday. Now that's at Resorts World. I just opened at Resorts World Brand a new. couple of weeks ago. Brand new. And that's pseudo. Yeah. So Junior's has... Blintzes, latkes, and matzo ball soup. Okay. All right. So I, that's kind of pseudo to me. All right. Saginaw's is another one at Circa. At, at Circa, right. Now that is Saginaw from Michigan. Yeah, they don't even pretend to be New York. <laughs> they don't even have matzo I think they have matzo ball they soup. They do. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, they do. Okay, so now we get, so we were illuminated Greenberg's, Juniors, and Saginaw's. Now we get to the Real Jewish Dells. Wait a minute, one more, one more. Your favorite, Sadell's. Sadell's <laughs> is New York, but it's not a deli. That's it's, at Bellagio. It's a coffee shop. Yeah. I couldn't stand that place. <laughs> I mean, it was good food, but it wasn't deli, and I wanted deli. Sadell's, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't even have that on the list. Yeah, I, I got you. I got you. <laughs> it was totally forgettable to me. So now, interesting, the real deal is outside the casinos. Right. Right. The real deal is in the neighborhoods. Yeah, okay. So Weiss gets a lot of um, publicity. It's in Henderson, but it's kind of okay. It has, it has matzo ball soup. It has latkes. Mm -hmm. It has um, blintzes. But it also has matzo brai. Okay. I don't know what matzo brai is. So What's matzo brai is a Passover dish where... You scramble matzo uh -huh. with eggs. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, my parents are going to watch this. They're going to know. They're going to go, know. our son doesn't know. Oh, my God. <laughs> he doesn't no know. Surprise. I've made it for him. Like, okay. So, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Weiss has matzo brai and stuffed cabbage. Okay. Which is Jewish, Eastern European, right? And it also has um, smoked fish. Perfect. That so sounds good. to be New York, and I mean, New York deli, it doesn't necessarily have to be Jewish, but you've got smoked whitefish, you've got sable, you've got sturgeon, and Jewish, you've got pickled herring. Okay. Right? Smoked salmon, right? right? 
Well, that's lox. Lox, yeah. But that's different than smoked salmon. Okay. So lox isn't smoked. Lox is salted. That's right. It's heavily salted. So I've made lox. I make lox. You get a you get a fillet of salmon and you dump a bunch of rock salt, diamond crystal kosher. Okay. And you let it sit for 24 hours. It sucks out all the ewes and it and it preserves it. And then you slice it up and you got lox. You it's put it on simple. a bagel. Very simple. Yeah. All right, so that's Weiss. Let's get. That's I like Weiss. I, I used to go to Weiss a lot to get uh, to get the smoked fish, right? I'd get the sable, and mm-hmm. um, it reminds me of you know I grew up in a, a Jewish neighborhood in um, in Michigan area, and my dad would go get bagels and bring back uh, smoked fish. Nice. So uh-huh. yeah, that's where I get it here in Vegas. Uh huh. Well, then we've got the the big two. Okay. Which is which are Seagull's Bagel Mania, mm-hmm. which is on Convention Center Drive just off the Strip in a fairly new building uh, opened a few years ago. And then Bagel Cafe, which is out in Summerlin. Mm-hmm. And the Bagel Cafe people also run the Del Mar Deli at South Point. But the Del Mar Deli is kind of dumbed down from the Bagel Cafe. Bagel Cafe has... If you combine the Bagel Cafe and Siegel's Bagel Mania, you come up with one good Jewish dough, mm-hmm. if you could do that. Right. So Bagel Cafe has kishka. Okay. Now kishka is, they call it, it's stuffed derma in English, and it's kind of a sausage, and they slice it thin and they serve it with gravy. Well, they call it blood sausage, right? Don't they? No. Isn't that what it is? Because in, in Polish, now that now we're getting into mine, in, in Polish it's kishka. And kishka is blood sausage. Yeah, this is different because it, to be kosher, it's you can't have blood <laughs> with your food. Ah, I see. Right. That's right. 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 So they've got kishka and gravy at the Bagel Cafe. They've got chopped liver. They've got pickled herring, stuffed cabbage, and the, the fish plates, and they have rugula. Rugula. You know, rugula. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah so Cantor's has the best rugula, in my opinion. Uh, but who does? Cantor's. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. In L.A. Well, in L.A., yeah. yeah. You know, they had a Cantor's in between the Flamingo and a Link for a while, and then it went away. I don't know what happened yeah, to it, but I missed right. it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, Seagull's Bagel Mania. So, um, Bagel Cafe has Kishka. Seagull's Bagel Mania has Kreplach. I've heard of it, yeah. Now, kreplach is what they call a Jewish wonton. Mm-hmm. It's a dumpling. It's exactly like wonton. They stick it in chicken soup. There are all these K foods yeah. with the Yiddish. They've yeah. got kanish, they've got kreplach, they've got kugel, they've, yeah. got, um, they've got kishka, right? They've got the kasha, kasha and vanishkas. That's kasha is buckwheat groats, vanishkas is bow tie noodles. It's, that's one of my favorites. Anyway, Bagel uh, Mania has the whitefish, sable, sturgeon, pickled herring, kugel. Oh, kreplach, that's good. Okay. And rugula. So you take you take Bagel Cafe with kishka, and you put it together with Siegel's ba- Bagel Mania with kreplach. Now you've got. A real New York Jewish deli. All right. Yeah, I've, I've never felt so out of a conversation in my life. <laughs> but actually, no, it's true. I did Bagel Mania is, yeah. is really where I went even more often now that I'm remembering. In their, in their previous uh, location is where I would get the really great uh, sable, smoked sable, and you know bring it back for the office and things like that, which is making me really hungry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to want to go do that. Well, ba- Bagel Mania I've been meaning to go to because every time I drive by it, it's right by my house, and it looks cool. And I think they do events. There sometimes, like they did the eating, uh, the hot dog eating contest right. there, and uh, giant sandwiches, everything else. It's it's great. So I mean, there's about everything you want to know about Jewish delis in Vegas. I mean, I, I don't think we've left anything out there. Yeah. Well, and the other thing about Siegel's Bagel Mania, they have video poker at the bar. Oh yeah, wow, I didn't know that. It's probably the only Jewish deli in the world that has video poker. But well, now that's just become the coolest Jewish deli in the world. They they won't they won't comp your kreplach though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to ask the bagel boss. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll see. (laughs) All right. And in this week's jackpot of the week, uh, it's kind of a story. Uh, Anthony, do you want to get into it? Last week we were playing at Molly's Casino, which is a fun spot we go to. Molly's Casino over on Rainbow. Yeah, Rainbow and uh, what is it? Uh, Lake Mead. Lake Mead, thereabouts. 
It's uh, it's just like a slot house, mm-hmm. and uh, this is the second one in a week uh, yeah. that we we're doing it. I mean, second one in a row, rather that we're doing because we witnessed it. Yeah, we were just there. Nobody sent it in, and we just witnessed it. So yeah. anyway, Andrew's playing over here. I'm playing over over there. Whatever. And all of a sudden, we hear this commotion. Commotion going on. And this kid gets up. And I mean a kid. This, yeah. this, this guy looked like he was maybe 22, 23 years old. Yeah. And he's just like all crazy, right? Yeah. And he's pointing at the screen and everything else and uh, whips out his phone. And he's like shaking and, you know, whatever. Well, what he's happened? He's pacing back and yeah. forth on the phone. Yeah, he's pacing <laughs> back and forth. By now, everybody's running over to see what happened. Yeah. Well, he's playing a game called Bullfrog and Kino. Yeah. I have no idea about this game. No right? idea. I can, uh, I can guess that the casino edge is going to be around 10, 12 percent, whatever. Sure. You know, it's a, more. It's a video kino game. It's got what's one of these you know, hybrids with all these bells and whistles and free games and everything else. And from what we can discern, he hit a uh, looks like a solid seven spot with a nine times multiplier. Anyway, the final result is he gets 81,000 nickels. Yes. Right? 4,000 plus. Perfect. And he's walking around, and he's just, he don't know what to do. Yeah. And people are taking photos of it, including us, and he doesn't care. And yeah. he's on the phone talking. It, it was just wild. He's pacing back and forth like he owes somebody money. He's like, I got your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's funny yeah. because, you know, again, we just, you just witness the different reactions of people. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking, it's 4,000. And everybody's just to make this whole commotion. And I look at one of the workers who's who looks at me. And I go, rookie. Rookie. Yeah, that was hilarious. <laughs> but, but it was great to see the guy. The kid was so happy. Yeah. You know, Eighty thousand uh, nickels. And it went on for a while. It took them a little while to pay him out. It took him about ten minutes to pay him out. Yeah. So you know he's pacing back and forth, calling different people. Everyone's coming over. I mean, uh, it was fun. And it's so hard, Deke. You know, I keep trying to t- I keep trying to train people off of Kino. Yeah. And then something like this happens. And we shine a light on it, you know? Yeah. I mean, maybe we oughtn't to. I don't know. Just remember, by switching to a game like video poker, you are going to lose less over the long haul. That's right. Well, here's my advice to that young man. Yeah. You take your 4000 and never play that game again. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Uh, anything to add, Deke? No. <laughs> <laughs> What I what I thought was funny, we were trying to figure out what exactly happened on you know when you're looking at the uh, at the screen, and we couldn't even figure it out. We couldn't even research it to figure out why he hit eighty one thousand. Just wasn't obvious on the screen. If anybody can see why it is obvious on the screen, let us know. But we couldn't figure it Any out. Any bullfrog and Kino experts out there? Where's that? Se- where's the seven spot? I don't see it. Yeah, let us know what happened. Uh, we took a picture of the screen, and uh, now I'm going to have to find this game and play it a little bit to try to figure out what the heck happened. Of course but. you are. Of course. <laughs> of course you will. Of course you have to. <laughs> it's an excuse to uh, to play the uh, the crack game known as Kino. All right, so this one is a little bit different, you know, and uh, we're we're experimenting with things. We uh, we talked uh, last week about possibly having some of the influencers on. We mentioned Vegas uh, Matt, and yep. uh, I said I didn't know him. I, I do know who he is, and uh, he he uh, contacted us, yeah. and said he'd like to be he would be happy to be on the show. Oh, so nice. we'll I think we'll set something up with him in the next uh, next few episodes, or the next few uh, versions of this, and. Uh, We'll see what happens. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, thank you, Deke, for uh, coming on the show. You're welcome. And uh, thanks for shaving. Thanks for shaving. Yeah. And uh, you can shave too at home if you like. a great rundown i didn't know about all those foods yeah that's great that was very cool uh well yeah i was really surprised about didn't mention brisket and tongue you know tongue is the one that separates the men from the boys yeah i don't know if i'm down with the tongue uh, I'm down with the tongue. I grew up with tongue. I I never understood. I'm not down with cow tongue. My mother said, 
this is tongue. Well, I'm, okay, but where does the tongue come from? She said, cows. I'm like, without a tongue, how do they move? 